the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. If you tuned into our show last week, we were just getting into the important subject of what matters most when fishing mats. When we ran out of showtime and had to postpone the rest of the story, as famous newsman Paul Harvey used to say. Well, here we are with Bill's conclusion on fishing matted vegetation for bass. This type of great terrain is one that bass love, and the better prepared you are to fish it, the more successful you're sure to be. Watch. Good. Oh, look at here. Tear it up here, buddy. Why'd you stop for? Just get out of that grass. Look at this fat thing. We'll just have to lift you straight up. We'll rope you in. Woo! That's a pretty fish right there. <laughs> what you're doing here, you're searching for a pattern in this underwater mess. Look for repetition. Of course, the mats are not uniformly thick throughout. Sometimes you'll find that the vegetation is extremely thick in one spot, and in another place, it won't be nearly so. This is why it's smart to have a couple of rods rigged with different size sinkers. One might be a half ounce, and the other one rigged might be one ounce for different situations. This allows you not to only get the bait through the cover, but it also provides for more of a natural fall. I want the bait that falls most naturally through the vegetation without creating too much fuss. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Turn around here and keep calm. You know now when it comes to equipment, I like a lightweight, extra long quantum medium heavy smoke seven foot uh, fishing rod for this type of cover with a high speed uh, smoke reel like this quantum 8.1 to 1 speed freak reel now let me show you how we've got it rigged okay the line we're using today is strands braid clear blue fluorescent 50 pound test and attached to that we're using a section of 20 to 24 inch 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. And attached to that is our sinker, our hook, and our bait. Now the bait we're using is Bass Pro Shops three and a half inch green pumpkin river bug. It's a great little bait. A strong, strong little fish that really like this bait. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly.
Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Hit it. Oh boy, here's a point. Holy <laughs> moly, just look at this. Oh my goodness gracious. That, uh, this is a pretty heavy rod, and he is just putting all kind of pressure on it. He's got some power, I can tell you that. That is a big, fat one, too. That's not something. Look at that big old... That gorgeous... That is a pretty fish. Talking about tungsten weights a while ago. Yes, tungsten weights are smaller in size than lead, but of equal weight. They can still separate the fish's mouth on a hook set. Now, another thing I do is use a sinker stop, this thing right here. I slide it all the way down. And what I, ouch, what I wanna do is keep the sinker and the bait together. I don't want it separated. I don't want it up here and the, the, the bait down here and hanging over something and the sinker down here, trying to work it up over. I want, a, I want it all together when I climb up over cover like that. As I pull it along, I want it all to climb over and just in one fluid movement as I, as I work it along. Uh, like I said, I use a sinker stop simply because I want my sinker to always stay next to my bait. By doing this, they both slide through the vegetation together and provide a more fluid movement on the fall and don't get separated and get hung up in the cover, disturbing it and disturbing or possibly uh, running the risk of spooking catchable fish. Now, when fishing any type of cover during tough conditions, let's say, uh, after a cold front or during high pressure or low pressure times, anytime fishing's tough, when you want to slow down and when you're fishing inactive fish, you have the tendency to fish much faster. And I found time after time, a slow approach is always best. You really have to pay attention and remain conscious of what your bait is doing at all times. Got that bait right there. I know he's got it. He's got it. Uh, he's cutting out of the boat with it. Another one of the fat ones. Look how fat that fish is. I'm gonna get you out of that stuff if I can. Ooh. Look how, look, just look how healthy that fish is. Mm. Toodaloo. Like a balloon. He even has trouble going back down. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Outsmart, outfish, outlast. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. And Tracker Boats, 
fish the finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Today's show is sponsored in part by Strin, the standard of dependability since 1958. Fish defunct, kill the stink, and Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Now, when I'm fishing, my best presentation is I'll flip it out there or pitch it out there, and when, it, when I get it out there, I'll let it fall, and when it falls, I'll pick it up and I'll drop it. I'll pick it up and I'll drop it. I want it to go all the way down. If there's additional cover down there like it is right here, I'll kind of shake it and let it fall and let it go on down. If I'm having trouble getting it all the way down, I'll go, like I'm using a 3 8 right now, or a half ounce, what I'll do is jump up to a 3 quarter ounce. And if I'm still having trouble, I'll go to a 1 ounce. I mean, I, I'll keep, I've got to feel what that bait is doing. And I wanted to get through that cover on down. Uh, I've got to get to where the fish are, or I'm wasting my time. Uh, if I feel like there's nothing there, I'll look for another opening and drop it again. And what I want, the main thing I want to do, I don't want to rush it. I absolutely don't want to rush it. And we have a tendency when we're fishing, if we're not catching fish, we have a tendency to fish fast. We just do. It's just by nature, we just do that. Uh, we don't want to do that. See, I'll pitch it in that hole right there. What I do, we're blessed that we have a, a piece of equipment called power poles. We can drop these power poles, our power pole, we power pole anchor down, okay? I'll drop them and I'll sit right here and I'll work, I'll see a hole right here, I'll work that hole. I'll drop that bait in there and I'll yo-yo it up and then I'll, there's a little hole right there. I fished that a while ago, but it, look right there, there's one there and I fished it. I fished that spot a minute ago and didn't catch a fish, but sitting there talking. But something about it, you just, you have to, you have to keep, you fish a spot and something will tell you to move on. You can always come back but the key thing is, you don't want to rush it. Like I said, when the action's slow, you have the tendency to fish fast. But that's a no-no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Take your time. Be methodical. Uh oh, look right there. I spooked the fish right there.
There he is. Oh yeah. Oh, they look big under the water right there. Howdy. What are you thinking? You worried about what's going to happen to you? Well, nothing's going to happen to you if you just calm down. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. Hey, it's David Dunn at Garmin. Where did he see the latest developments in electronics going? It seems everything's getting bigger, faster, and smarter in the marine electronics. The screen sizes are getting bigger. The processes are getting faster so they can do more. The redraw speeds are so much faster. And they're getting smarter so they can interact with your smart devices, your phones, and your tablets. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning is provided by Bill Dance Digital. Follow us. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter, sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Pan Optics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. Remember as a teenager how excited you were when you got your first car? <laughs> well, that's exactly how I felt when I got this new boat that I'm fishing in today. It's a Z21 design for tracker by my good buddy, Kevin Van Dam. And let me tell you, it's truly a pleasure to fish out of. Roomy with plenty of storage and always gets me there safely and gets me back. If you're looking for the latest fishing information and tips, be sure to check out the free Bill Dance mobile app, available for both iOS and Android users. came out of there with it. Another one of those rascals. Look at him, he just wants to get back in there. I'm gonna let you go back. Just... This stuff grows on all types of banks, flat banks, uh, sloping banks, steep banks, shallow banks, rocky banks, sand banks, mud banks, flat, you know, you name it. All different types of composition, uh, the types of banks. But the banks that, the banks that bass like of the bank where well, this stuff grows where there's deeper water close by. Now I can assure you, you're looking at this bank right here. The outer edge of that cover, that, down that bank where that spike rush is, I could, I could wade down it. And I doubt if I would be in water deeper than that right there. They like banks close to deeper water. But watch this. One and two and three, it's going to 14. Four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12. Well, I lied, it's 12 feet. As you can see, it's 12 feet there and it's four feet right there.
I mean, that is a big, big, fat fit. He wants to jump, but he can't. Boys, I don't know what y'all been eating. But y'all have a flat. I guess it's genetics. I don't know. That is a big, fat fish. Look at that. You talking about a fat one? That's not fat. Man, gorgeous fish. Good Lord doesn't make them any prettier than that. Mm. Okay, baby. Go on. What are you going to do? Watch you go into that boat. Go on, honey. Go on. Thank you. Oh, a fat, fat fish. I think it's just genetics. It's just, it's just big, fat. All of them are just, most of them are just big, fat fish. You know, today has just been, this has just been one of those days. It's just been a special, special day. The size of the fish, the healthy, strong, just, it's just been, the way we've gone about catching them, it was kind of a special way of catching them. Just, it was different, it was unique. And uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I sure hope you did. But before I get out of here, let me just say, sometimes an area may seem unproductive when I fish it, but it's not uncommon for me to return and fish it again later that day. Yep, doing this is added effort, but I don't mind it because I know it matters, especially when it comes to catching more fish. So until next time, tell you what you do. You catch one for me. We'll see you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.